Zoe, leave that chicken alone. Zoe is in the house. The cuckoo is just making noise alone. Ah, you're cooking and picking my kelele up. Ah, and then you go up and then you And then you go with this. Stucky. And then you notice you here. And even you are blocking the light over there. Why does I leave my Lisa? Hi, my name is Pastor David Evagata, and this is Evagata Unchained. I want to talk to us about the issues of morality. We live in a very depraved world, a world where good is bad and bad is good, where right is wrong and wrong is right. And we feel like, whoa, why should I be good then? Is morality old school? Is doing right a thing of the past? Is being honest, you know, a historical event for that matter? And the question I want us to ask is, if we do not have a measure of what morality is, what then happens? What happens to us? Is it folly or freedom? See, the psalmist looks at the, the people, the psalm in Psalm 73, talks about this. Uh, and so it's not a new thing to us. The 73rd psalm uh, begins with this word, Surely the Lord is good to those who are upright in heart. Surely the Lord is good to those who are upright in heart. And we know that. God is good to those who are upright. He says the righteous, righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. But then he says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. Why? He was like, I'm giving up, you know. And some of us are at the verge of giving up when it comes to morality, when it comes to doing right, because we just seem to be putting in coins in a big hole. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. And he paints the picture of these wicked people who have no struggles. Everything seems to be going for them. They, they can claim whatever they want to claim and get it. They can walk into a police station, bribe the police to get, come and do their dirty work for them. While the, the honest, uh, righteous people suffer the brunt of this. And so... The wise man looks at this and it disturbs him the same way that it disturbs us. And he felt like we are losing ground. Morality is not really working. We are doing good, but good doesn't seem to pay because every time the one who bribes gets the way. A friend of mine was looking for a passport and so was his sibling. The sibling bribed and within four days they had their passport. He kept waiting for his passport and going back and back for almost a month. Why do good? And they say, the psalmist goes on and says, they say, how can God know? Does the Most High have knowledge? Why should, should God give us measures of what to do? Shouldn't we just do whatever we want? Shouldn't we just call right what is exciting for us and leave the rest? And the psalmist switches a place, he says, when this is what the wicked are like, they are always carefree. They increase in wealth. I remember watching friends of mine going to the clubs and partying. And you know, you always look at that lifestyle and you think, oh, glam, you know, it's just all that I want. And you feel like, why, why did I give my life to Christ at this tender age? Why should I struggle with saying no to this and that and the other when others are doing it and seem to flourish? Then the wasamist goes on and says, surely in vain have I kept myself pure. It's the point of despair. Why, should, why have I kept myself pure? In vain have I washed my hands in innocence. All day long I've been plagued. I've been punished every morning. Think about it. Every time people want to do something wrong, they're excited and go out to do it. And there you are trying to do the right thing. When I tried to understand all this, he says, it was oppressive to me. Have you ever felt stressed about just being a good person? Like, why, why am I doing all this good? Till... I entered the sanctuary, the psalmist says in verse 17. Then I understood their final destiny. Surely you, you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. Now, and then it goes to verse 20. As a dream, when one awakes, so you, when you rise, O Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. And I just want you to see this. It is not wrong for you to, to feel the way you feel about seeing how wickedness seems to thrive. 
In fact, it is not wrong for you to feel like it's better off doing the wicked thing than doing the right thing. But then when we look at the final destiny, that is where the rubber meets the road. And where do we find this answer? When we enter the sanctuary, when we enter the presence of God and begin to listen to what he is saying to us. The psalmist concludes this conversation with con making this declaration. But as for me, it is good to be near God. In fact, it begins by saying, Whom have I in heaven but you? The earth has nothing I desire besides you. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Whom have I in heaven but you? And listen, it's very easy to be waylaid by the snares of this world. But then there is something that God has for us that spans beyond this life to give us hope for eternity, to give us hope beyond things. It's one thing to have it. It's another thing to be it. It's one thing to have wealth. It's another thing to be contented. It's one thing to have everything you want around you. It's another thing to be able to enjoy what you have around you. The sum total of a man is not in the amount of things he has gathered or she has gathered around her. But it's in the sum total of being able to say, this the Lord has given me and I'm able to enjoy with a peace of mind and a peace of heart. God bless you. This has been Ewagata Unchained. Thank you.